This is a free download from the BBC. For more information, go to bbc.co.uk slash podcasts. Call 08459 455 555. Now, BBC Three Counties Radio. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, joined by not just a radio legend... Uh, no, he's just a radio legend. No, you, Tony Blackburn, you smell fantastic. Yeah, Jean-Paul Jotier. Gautier. Jean-Paul Jotier. Jean-Paul Jotier. <laughs> Jean-Paul Jotier <laughs> do, I, do, do I smell great? You smell wonderful. I, I make the effort for you, particularly on these mornings, you know, when I, and I was very glad when I got invited in, because otherwise that would have all gone to waste. <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, it's so nice to have you in. The reason we're doing this is you popped in the other week, because yeah. we, were, we were playing some of your songs. And by the way, Chop Chop is now the, the anthem of this show. Yeah. Timbo! Uh, and we thought it would Classic. be nice. It, well, yeah. Yep. We thought it would be nice if you came in and had a proper um well if we had a proper chat with you yeah because uh, you you work everywhere you work on so many yeah. different stations on the bbc on commercial mm. all over the place but um i i don't really know anything about you tony mm. and i don't know if people do know anything about you can i just before we get into this chat oh uh He's I just say already. that being a music man i was uh, i've listened to your show for a long time now yes and never had any complaints can i make one complaint this morning <laughs> would that be all right if i made just yeah, one please complaint? do go on yeah and i know you you like me don't like getting criticism because there are no. loads of people up there that yep, tell yep. you you can't do this you can't do that the and you tell them basically to you know jog on yes. yep. yeah um and, and that's fine. Uh, but uh, it, this morning I was enjoying You Can't Get No Satisfaction by the Rolling Stones, and suddenly, right in the middle of it, you went to a, a damn report, a, a motorway report. What is more important at this yep. time of the morning? People, all right, yep. traffic jams or coming to the end of the Rolling Stones. Yeah. Do you know whose fault that was? Who was that? Catherine Ball, the producer. No. Um, I was doing... I had the timing perfectly. We were yeah. about to go into travel and she said, you've got to play a song. Well... So, oh, come on, guys. We change all know your how producer. It goes. We all know how it goes. <laughs> Again? There's no one left. Uh, they had to beg me. No, I'd take that back. I'd take that back. I'm going to... Put, put your headphones on. Yeah. Uh, Justin's on the line as well. Morning, Just. Hey, good morning, guys. Now, we, both of us, genuinely, uh, we got very excited by this. Mm. So I'm going to leave your line open, Just. Fine. And you can chip in whatever you want. Tony, I tell you what, yep. I'm going to... Can I just throw some names at you, yes. first of all? Because I'm guessing you've worked with everyone. Yeah. And just, just whatever pops into your head. Yep. The Beatles. The Beatles. Uh, well, I saw the Beatles. Yeah. Uh, I worked with on, on Top of the Pops. Uh, I've met, uh, let me see, Paul McCartney. I've interviewed Paul McCartney. Yeah. Very nice man. And I saw them for the very first time uh, in Bournemouth uh, in 1960-something or other. Yeah. At a place that is now a car park. <laughs> uh, it was the old, Winter Gardens. All of these Bournemouth. old venues are car parks They now, are car or, parks. Or Littles or something. Well, at least they're useful, aren't they? What was, uh, what was McCartney like? Uh, very I, nice. Really? I wrote to him... I I wrote to him uh, I, I, in an email when I worked for another radio station asking him for money because I reckon over the years I've uh, played loads and loads of their records yeah, yeah. and they owe me run about a million and a half. Wow, so and when's that, when's that cash coming through? Well, he, he didn't reply. Hey, yeah, see. and I, I, I mentioned it to him on the interview and he said to me, he said, I didn't get your email. So I said, well, if I emailed you again, would yeah. that make any difference? And he said, no. What's his email? Paul McCartney at yahoo.co.uk like or something that. like that? Yeah, something like that. Kenny Everett. Kenny Everett, yeah. Yeah, and what was he like? Kenny, Kenny was very, uh, very odd. <laughs> <laughs> but he was lovely. Lovely man. Was, he, was he hard work? Because I imagine that, that, that people like that, that uh, and he was brilliant. Yeah. But I imagine he can be, people like that can be a bit annoying at times, can't they? Just relentless and well, full on. He, he wasn't really annoying. A very shy man. Very, very shy oh. person. And we fell out a little bit, to be honest with you, in 1967. Uh, oh. We read in the New Musical Express that we didn't like one another. Oh, and which was not true. And he he thought that that was true, and I tried to make up with him. And then one day we went out with my agent, mm. and it was her 60th birthday, and he loved my wife, Debbie, and uh, he liked her very much indeed. And he spilt some red wine over himself, and he blamed me for it. He said, you did that on purpose. And my wife said, no, he didn't. And he gave me a big kiss, and we made up. Wow. And that was about two years before he passed away. Oh, yeah. man. Because he yeah. was brilliant, it's wasn't he? a little he? bit boring or not? No, no, this is no, great. I'm loving it. Yeah. Honestly, this is great. He was brilliant, wasn't he? You don't... Yeah. Th I'm trying to think. There aren't any um, mavericks like him. No, he was great. Anymore. Yeah. yeah he was People great. are trying to do something a little bit different. Yes, Absolutely. <laughs> Uh, uh, Pirate Radio. How did Pirate you get into that? I loved it. I uh, read an, uh, an article in the New Musical Express wanting disc jockeys just applied for the job. But what were you doing before it. that? I was a dance... Uh, I was a singer and a musician in a dance band in Bournemouth. 
uh, at the Bournemouth Pavilion Ballrooms, right. and also studying. I've got a diploma in business studies. Sorry, I was uh, <laughs> really. Yeah, I'm not as sick as you thought I was. <laughs> <laughs> so you got a diploma? Yeah, yeah. yeah. high H and D, a high national diploma in business, Flip law and uh, economics and things like that. So yeah. you're a brain box. Yeah. But so okay, so you're a singer in the back. What instrument were you playing? Uh, guitar. Okay. Uh, and and what, yeah. when was this? Sort of sixty-four. Sixty. No, this was uh, nineteen sixty. Oh, okay. Uh, sixty, seventy, and eighty. Yeah. And who were your? No, not sixty, seventy. Uh, 60, 61, 62, and then I joined Radio Carol. OK, so who were your um, your influences musically then, when Elvis you were in a Presley. band? Really? Yeah, Elvis Presley. I uh, not only look like him, but I sound like him very much. In fact, I think, I like to think he was influenced a little bit by some of my <laughs> early recordings. <laughs> we'll have some That's of your... what I like to think. Well, and Bobby V as well. Bobby V. Bobby V. What, did, Bobby, did Bobby V sing Blue Velvet? What was, no, uh, was... Bo- Bobby V sang uh, The Night Has a Thousand Eyes oh. and things like that, yeah. yeah. And so you were doing that kind of stuff. Yeah. And then you just saw an advert saying, yep. oh, we want DJs. Yes. And you just went and for I it. I applied for it, yeah. What did you have to do in the audition? I had to introduce four records. Yeah. And they were all, I introduced four Beatles records for some reason. Okay. And then I went up to Caroline House and uh, I got the job on the Friday and I was on the ship on the Wednesday. And how long were you out at sea for? In, 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 what, how long were the chunks? Two, we did two weeks on and a week off. And uh, so it worked out nine months a year at sea. That's so, you know, it sounds awful. It was lovely. It was great. What were the conditions like? What was your, your room like? Uh, it was a very small little cabin. Yeah. And, uh, you know, we had it, and uh, and it was great. Great out there. I loved who, it. Who were you sharing with? Were you, were I, you was, sh- I was sharing with... Um, uh, somebody that uh, we can't mention anymore. <laughs> well, it's a little tricky, yes. Okay, yeah. Uh, and so, uh, and then I shared my cabin with another person that we can't mention very well. well, well Denning and Savile, I'm assuming. Was it? Was what? it? Was it Chris Denning and, and Savile? Were they the? No, no. Chris Denning and uh, somebody starts his with D. Oh, okay, right. Yeah. Okay. Well, we yeah. can we can half mention him. Yes. Um, no, Savile wasn't out on the ship. Savile so didn't no. go out on the ship, did? But Denning was, of course. And De- yes. it, 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 well, I've got to ask. It must be weird, and we don't need to go into specifics. Yeah. No, it's all right. But these people that you have worked with yes um getting getting taken getting you know that their horrible pasts coming yes. up that must be really odd for you to Very see odd. that happen and the only problem with it is of course we're all tarred with the same brush a little yeah. bit from that era so everybody waits for you you know it, it's crazy mm. you know it's lots crazy. of episodes of top of the pops that can never be uh, shown again well that's true yes here's yeah. a question gary glitter okay yeah uh, and I don't, we won't dwell on this too much I we'll get back gary to the fun glitter, stuff yes I, I, I was a big gary glitter fan huge gary glitter yeah, fan and i saw right. him in concert that's and i right. met him and i, I you know What's yep. going on is obviously horrible. But musical history is being rewritten. Mm-hmm. And if you have a top ten c- countdown from 1975, for example, on Radio 2, mm-hmm. the, the host will say, uh, we'll just skip number nine if it was Gary Glitter. Yes. Do you want to touch? They'll just yep. skip it. Yep. What do you think about that? Do you think we should erase him completely from musical history? Or? Well, it's difficult because he was so uh, much a, a big part of it, wasn't he? It's, yeah. it's, uh, and also those songs that he made were terrific for disco dancing mm. and things. Uh, just great songs. I mean, they all sounded the same, rather. Yeah. But he was a great a great showman, wasn't he? Yeah. I mean, I had no idea. I mean, I was doing uh, Junior Choice at the time, you know, the, and, um, you know, he was, a, he was a guest on the programme. And uh, it, it's just tragic. Yeah. You know, people who do those sort of things, well, you know, it's, it's awful. And I, I, uh, but it didn't... Uh, the, the, the thing is that all these people now... It doesn't reflect what it was like in the in the sixties. No, no, because Radio One, when I went there, it was a beautifully run station. The people were great, yeah. and it was one of those things. So it wasn't all like that. It was, no, it, it just wasn't. Uh, Justin, mm, yes, you've, boss. you've taken this to the streets, haven't you? I have. I spent the last hour talking to Tony Blackburn fans. Boy, they Did are you special. Find any? <laughs> <laughs> oh yes, we found them. Oh, nice. uh, we've got four questions here coming up for you. Yeah. Um, they get weirder, and oh. we also oh. have a German perspective. Oh. Uh, as a part German of these questions. Perspective. Yes, that is a, a, a social question for you. Yep. But uh, question number one, we've kind of touched upon it already, but uh, there's a nice compliment in, in here as well yep. for you. So uh, take a listen to question one. Tim, you're a huge Three Counties fan. Uh, listen to Ian every morning. Also, Tony Show. What is your question to the main man, Tony Blackburn? What made you do it? <laughs> <laughs> what, what, made made that? <laughs> <laughs> what got you into it in the first place? How did you start? I, we when just you hear done his voice we? on the radio... What does it do to you? Because when I hear it, straight away, it lifts me. What does it do to you? Yeah, it's very commanding. It's, it's got commanding. a presence. It, 
Mm. It demands your attention. Very, com you're very commanding. Very commanding. Very commanding. commanding. Yes, yes, very. Is this Did from you? the German? <laughs> I don't think that was <laughs> the German. The German perspective is coming, Tony. Oh, I see. Was um, it, what, at what point, Tony? Because yeah. obviously, you, what you were a singer, and you released some singles, and mm. uh, you, then you became a. At what point did kind of DJing take over, and you go, "Oh, actually, this is this is what I'm going to do." Right from the, the word go. Really? Yeah, you loved I it. loved it. Yeah. Why? So, 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 um, well, it's, uh, you know what it's like. You sit down in front of a microphone, and uh, it's just fun. It's just absolute fun, and I've, uh, you know, I enjoyed talking nonsense. I ended Not up here, you do, of course. Well, no, no. <laughs> most of it, I ended up doing this job by accident. If I'm yeah. completely honest, yeah. I ended up doing this job because I couldn't get any more TV work. And, really? Yeah, and then I was offered a gig at LBC, a London station, and mm -hmm. I was like, oh, yeah, OK. It turned out I really, really enjoyed it, mm -hmm. and I, I'm half decent at it. I think I can kind of just yeah, about put it off. It. Well, but mm -hmm. may God bless you, sir. Uh, but it, it was... It, it, it seems an odd career to want to follow. I love it now I'm doing yes. it, and, but I, I prefer yeah. it over TV, I prefer it over anything yes. else. But it is, just, it is just messing around, isn't it? It is. It's, me it's messing around. I mean, there are certain stations where you can't do it, and uh, most of the commercial stations won't let you be a personality anymore, unfortunately. Yeah. But BBC, we're lucky. You know, that people let us get on with it. And uh, there are always people who want to change what you do, and I think the best thing to do, and if I was running a station, I'd say, if you hire somebody for what you do, let them do it. And don't, don't mess around, and don't don't. Tell somebody you can't do something. How did you get the, get the gig from uh, doing pirate radio? Yeah, was well, you you were like, like were considered to be like pop stars as well, weren't you? The, yes, the DJs yes, in pirate we radio. Is time, it true yeah. that there would be girls? Waiting at <laughs> his eyes bulged. You tell me what you want to tell me. You, tell, uh, no, no, you know no. uh, that there will be girls waiting at shore for you when you you know when you had your little breaks off. Not of the in ship. my case. Really? Oh come on! You <laughs> no, were well, yes, fella. yes, of course you did. Yes, yeah, yeah, lots of people. We were built up in those days like uh, pop stars. Uh, they didn't know what uh, the people didn't know what we looked like in those days, of course, until we got on television uh, at Radio One. But yes, with Radio One out, and it was massive. I mean, uh, we were built up like the pop stars. And what you were doing was revolutionary because yeah. because there was but you know people uh, there are a thousand you can turn on a digital radio yeah. there are a thousand music stations mm. but before the pirate stations there was nothing well, yeah. there was the, the the home service or the light program the, light program. the home service and radio three i i started off on the light program uh, with a program I used to be on for three quarters of an hour every week. Yeah. A lot of people thought that was too long. <laughs> <laughs> and it was called Midday Spin. And what did you play on Midday Spin? <laughs> well, I, 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 played, um, I, I, I played pop records. Yeah. It was really a tryout for opening up Radio 1. That's yeah. what it really was. You okay. know, I, got, I, I had a, a very um, a, a terrific manager called Harold Davison who handled Frank Sinatra and all those people. Wow. And when the ships were coming to an end, he said he, I was introduced to him by a guy called Tony Windsor, who was a head disc jockey on Big L Radio. London, yeah. and uh, Harold said to me, he said, I think the time has come to come off the ships. I'd love to manage you, and I'll make you the top disc jockey in three months. And I said, well, that would be lovely. And he did it in two months. Wow. Because he said there's a radio station called Radio 1 opening up, and the BBC... Hold wants... that thought. Yeah. I've got to do business, right. as you know. Uh, Justin? Mm. This is good, isn't it? It's great. It's fantastic. <laughs> you, ne you never hear Tony talking like no, this. No, you never brilliant. do it. Brilliant. Justin, stay there. Uh, Tony, stay there. I've got to do a little bit of business. Travel news for beds, cards and bugs. Some of the, we're talking about Sky News, dear listeners. Where Tony and I both uh, appeared on there reviewing the papers, and it depends what producer you've got as yeah. to whether you can do the kind of light-hearted stuff. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Or some go, yeah, but we want something a little bit heavier, mm. a little bit heavier, yes, please. Yeah. I, think, I think when you wake up in the morning, you want to have fun. Don't you think so? You don't I, want to be I brought down so. the press. Not everybody thinks that, judging by the emails and the texts that we get really? to this show. Uh, Biggers is on the line. Morning, Biggers. Hello, me old Mark and me old friend, me old Charlie. Hey, hey boss, you're through to Tony Blackburn. Oh, the legend that is, yeah? Yeah, what you got for him? Um, I've got a two-part question, if it's OK with Tony. Um, yeah. What's his favourite... Um, has, he, has he got a favourite you know, artist or group or whatever band that he's ever met? And has he ever met the king? Um, no, I haven't. I haven't met Elvis. Uh, my favourite artist is Marvin Gaye. Yeah. Love Marvin oh, Gaye. He's a legend as yep. well. And uh, I love Frankie Beverly and Maze. Who? Frankie Beverly and Maze. I don't know who that is. Maze. Joy and Pain. Joy and Pain. Oh, yeah. And Maze, yeah. yeah. Do you know that one? Yeah, yeah I do know that one. Thank you, Biggers. You know that one, Decaf. Yeah. Go on then. What's it? He just sang it perfectly well. Love is the key. 
Yeah, loads of them. Speaking loads of foreign language, did you ever meet Marvin Gaye? No. Oh. It's the only, only Motown act I've never met. Really? I met, I, I've toured with Dinah Ross and the Supremes. Do you mean you've toured with her? Yeah. What do you mean? Yeah, I did a national tour with Dinah Ross and the Supremes. What, you singing or you no, oh, no, I wasn't singing. No, no. OK. I wouldn't want to sing with her. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was comparing. She was hard work, wasn't she? She was a, no, Even she, then she was a bit of a diva, wasn't she? She was all right. She, I found her all right, yeah. yeah. I mean, she's, she's once again a very shy person. You know, she wears those big dark glasses now. Yeah. She's apparently disappearing behind them now every time she comes to the country. Yeah. They get bigger and bigger. Smokey Robinson? Smokey Robinson. I met him uh, this summer, actually. Yeah. He's got the most amazing piercing eyes. He has, hasn't yeah. he? That's the thing. He's lovely. Uh, uh, the Beach Boys. Are the Beach Boys? Ever met, met, the met the Beach, Beach Boys? Boys? Yeah, I met the Beach what Boys. What were they yeah. like? Fabulous. Yeah, fabulous. I've just I've paid. always found the big... The only person I didn't like was Frankie Valli. Oh, why? What was Frankie Valli He like? was a little son, so... I went up to him um, <laughs> at, at Radio 2, at Radio 2, this was, uh, a couple of years ago, yeah. and the very first record I played was Frankie Valli and the Four Seasons Big Girls Don't Cry. No, sorry, uh, Ragdoll. Ragdoll, yeah. So I went up to him and I said, hello, uh, Mr. Valley." I said, uh, my name's Tony Blackburn. I said, um, yeah, I work here at Radio 2. And I said, um, the very first record I played was uh, yours, Big Girls Don't Cry. And he couldn't have given a damn. Really? He just turned his back. I thought a little sod. I felt like kicking him in the nuts. Oh, <laughs> 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 oh, what? <laughs> I wish I had. He was the right height. He's wee, isn't he? Oh, he's wee. small. Uh, Justin, you've got another yeah. question for us. Question two, please. Uh, so, some of these questions <laughs> are very bizarre, but it leads on nicely uh, from what you were saying there about Frankie Valley and what you wanted to do to him. Yeah. Here is question number two. Mandy, how are you today? I'm good. Okay, you have a very important question for Tony. <laughs> <laughs> What's your question? Uh, do you even wear underpants? Do I? Well, do I? What? I, mean, I, oh. I think knowing Tony, I think he he probably does. Wear underpants, do I wear but, underpants? Um, we'll yes, I do. Do, okay, do you wear underpants, Tony, or do you go commando? No, I wear underpants. Why fronts, have... boxers, trunks? What have you got? Uh, I've got, uh, uh, I don't know what they are, sort of like a trunk sort of thing. They're very, very good support. <laughs> um, <laughs> have to be. Uh, but um, I've got a very nice pair of um, oh, Superman uh, shorts as well, which I wear sometimes. Well, we've seen you in your onesies. <laughs> oh, yeah, the onesies. He's constantly wandering around <laughs> them. the office in uh, animal... What, which ones have you got? Oh, I've got a tie. Tiger one, I've got a Superman one, Batman one. I got everything. I love onesies. I think Al they're great. Speaking of pants, <laughs> Alan's on the line. Morning, Alan. Morning, T morning. How are you, Tony? Oh, Tony, very you well, are a, You are an absolute legend. In the <laughs> 80s, I used to follow you around. Oh, uh, you used to work for Radio London, didn't you, with Paul Wolf, uh, Steve Wolf? I still and do. You actually, and you actually, you actually come to Dunstable, didn't you, in the Crown in Dunstable on a Tuesday, Wednesday night? Well, he's hardly going to remember the exact night that he did it, Alan. Yeah, it was a Wednesday night. Oh, okay. really yeah, it was a laugh. Wednesday night. It was uh, about I was on the stage about midnight. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. What made me laugh? We was at the Hammersmith Palais with my yeah. girlfriend, and you actually stripped down your underpants, which really made me laugh. Bit turn you on a little bit, did it? Uh, no. So, uh, well, my 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 girlfriend at the time actually said, "Can you go and get some underpants, like Tony?" <laughs> <laughs> why did Why did you do that, Tony? I just like to. Tony, 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 Tony. Listen, Tony. Listen, talking about. Mays, talking about Mays, because yes. I like Mays as well. I actually see Mays and Frankie Beverly in the Anaheim Stadium in Los Angeles. Really? And what really made me laugh, what really made me a thingy, I was the only white guy there. Well, that that is a strange thing, isn't it? He does attract the uh, mm. the wider audience a little bit more. Did you ever come to the um, the National Cup Kilburn? I used to do every uh, uh, Christmas, and I might do it again this year, actually, uh, the erotic, yes, yes, the erotic yes. balloon dance. Yes, yes, oh. I, I, followed you, I followed you around for two seasons because I, I even <laughs> remember you done the Dole Soul night out of the Hammersmith Palais. Yeah. I know I, the only way you get a ticket is if you've got a Dole card. I had to go and borrow my mate's Dole card so I can go get a ticket. Al I don't remember that. <laughs> Alan's a bit of a stalker. We'll pass it. Alan, thank Lovely. you. We're going to pass your details on to the police. You did the balloon dance. Hey, pass them on to me. I need all the stalkers I can get now, this. <laughs> <laughs> so the Radio 1 gig, the, the, yeah. the Pirates, they kind of managed to sort of close them down or, or, or make them almost redundant. Yes, yes. Uh, I, I, Radio One. It was it was it breakfast you were doing on Radio One. Yeah, breakfast show. I did the first breakfast show. How well, yeah. that must have been because um, the eyes of the world were on that. Well, 20, they? twenty million audience every every morning. You know, it was eye boggling, really. Flipping it. Yeah. So, I, but there was nothing else to listen to. 
really. Yeah. You know, there were no commercial radio, no local BBC stations in those days. There was just Radio 2, which, funnily enough, in those days, it wasn't the the, the biggest one. It is right. now, of course. Yeah. yeah. Well, how long did you do The Breakfast Show for? Uh, five years. Then, uh, annoyingly, Noel Edmonds appeared. Oh, <laughs> People forget that he was big on the radio oh, as well. Oh, yeah. He was, and, and very, very good as well, you know. How long did you stay at Radio 1 for? At what point? Did, did you get years. Did you get booted out or did you leave I sort of, uh, well, I sort of got booted out, really. Right. Uh, when your contract isn't renewed, it's the same thing. Yeah, really, yeah, yeah, yeah. I found out from the uh, commissioner at the BBC, I went in one morning. The fellow on the door? Yeah, and he said to me, he said, oh, Tony, we are going to miss you. And oh. I didn't know anything about it. <laughs> That's terrible. Well, it's, uh, yeah, at least I knew. Then. <laughs> <laughs> and it is, it is part of the business. People yes. come in and out of fashion. And you, the last job I left was, was uh, uh, absolute. And the fellow said, we're yep. not going to renew your contract. And I sure. shook his hand and thanked him for the opportunity and walked out and had a little cry. And that's yes. kind of what, it's, happens. what it is. The um, main thing is not to get into an argument with somebody who sacks you because uh, eventually they re-employ you again. It's happened to be over and over it again. It all goes in a cycle. Yeah. You yeah. became, and I hope you don't mind me saying this, no, you right. did become a bit of a joke for a while with the whole smashy nice yeah. thing. That must have been quite tough. Was that well, tough for not you? not really, because I think the thing is that I used to... I'm sort of... Um, I used to get terrific audiences on Radio 1, but nobody liked me. <laughs> and uh, you know you have these evaluation figures. You get terrific figures, yeah, but yeah. everybody's irritated by you. <laughs> it's changed round now a little bit, and so um, people have sort of got used to me now. But and they it, don't get many figures. They do. Yeah, no, actually, I'm very <laughs> lucky. I luckily get the figures as well now yeah. for, on, on Radio 2, which is lucky. Um, no, I think what it is is that I used to go out there as a young guy at uh, 24, 25, stand on a stage and say, I'll stand here a moment and let you admire me. Now... I was joking. Now I still do it, and they see it. You know, I've practically fallen apart. You know, it's practically a dead man walking, and um, and you, you sort of <laughs> <laughs> and they get the joke. But I've I've never taken myself seriously. You see. Uh- uh, D- Justin, mm. the dog was Arnold, I think. Was it Arnold? Arnold the dog. Was that yes. Arnold the dog? Well, he, yeah, Arnold the dog. Yeah, he, he's he's dead, unfortunately. But I've had him stuffed, and he's nodding in the back of the car. Do, do you did, did you mount him? Uh, no, I've never mounted. <laughs> no. Catherine, you're waving your hand. Ev, yeah, I've, I've got a text here from Go Ev on. in Luton. Who Go says? On. Who claims? And I want you to verify yeah. this for me. Uh, he saw you at Kilburn, and you stopped Stevie Wonder walking off the stage. Um, on the very first, uh, it was my idea, these soul nights out, and uh, the very first night, Stevie Wonder turned up, turned up out of the blue, and um, Dave Pierce, who was the guy who was in charge of getting the acts on and off, he came onto the stage and he said to me, he said, Stevie Wonder's turned up, he came on to thank me for playing Motown records, wow. and he said he'd like to come on and sing, and I said, fabulous, and I did do a, a number with him. Did you sing with Stevie yeah, Wonder? Yeah. What did you sing? I can't remember now. He, but he, he wasn't going to walk off the stage and you saved his life. No. no that didn't happen. No, no, no. Okay. No. Dilly he just came on and sang and then he went off. What did, do you remember what he sang with him? I can't remember, actually, wow. but chop, he was chop, slightly chop. out of tune. <laughs> <laughs> he made you look bad. Yeah, Unbelievable. Exactly. Justin, question number three, please. Yeah, all about the length, and uh, oh. this one's quite a good one, actually. Oh. Uh, here is question number three. Oh, dear. Anne, you are a huge Tony Blackburn fan, aren't you? What is your Thank question you, for the tea dog back in our <laughs> studio? What's the longest song you've ever played? The longest song. <laughs> What's that? The MacArthur part. That's quite a long song. <laughs> What's the longest song? Richard Harris. Song we'll put the question played. to well, him. I've got a, I've got a record. And uh, I think Hang we'll on. also ask Sorry. him was there a reason that he played a long song? Was he feeling unwell? Okay. Thank you very much. <laughs> What's the longest song you've ever played, Tony? Um, was, was it so you could nip out for a wee or something? No, that, that, that one is always for, uh, let me see, it's Queen, Bohemian Rhapsody, <laughs> which is a very, very good record. It's a very long record. And I actually told, um, who's, who's the, the singer? Um, Freddie Mercury. Freddie Mer- no, not Freddie Mercury. Well, the, Brian May. Brian May, that's yes. right. Uh, my, my wife's very friendly with his wife, and I told Brian May that I'd never heard the record because I use it to, to go out and have a wee, <laughs> which is true because I don't like... I like uh, Bohemian Rhapsody very much. I don't like Bohemian Rhapsody, and it's no. always voted the number one song. Rubbish, right? Yeah, I, no, it's not rubbish, right? It's a silly thing to say that. Uh, you're, how, you're, how old are you now? 73? 72. 72? Yeah. Um, that you're working probably, I would imagine, in terms of radio shows you do, mm. more than you have ever done. Yeah, I'm doing quite a few, which I, I love it. Yeah. Kelly, very oh, the longest record, by the way, Crown, The Crown. Yeah. Oh, Gary Bird. Yeah, Gary Bird. Kelly, Goes very on for 12 quickly, minutes. tell me, Tony Blackburn was talking to you once about the, the stations he was working at, and... and 
Yeah, he was. You were listing all the stations that you worked for, and mm. I think you got to about five, and you couldn't remember the sixth one. You were like, "Oh, what? What? Where is it?" And I said, "Is it this one where you're standing?" And you were like, "Yeah." <laughs> <laughs> Did you? Well, ever... This is the most important one. Yeah, but God bless you. You, ne- you must have never, never thought that you'd, you'd be working this much at, at seventy-two, no. seventy-three. I mean, no, you... not really. Are you going to quit? No, no, no. I, I, I really, I, I couldn't bear this sort of retiring. No. We want to hope that that fade is open what? when you, you croak it. <laughs> wow. No, but just, it's what he would have wanted. A, that's an awful thing to say, but in a strange sort of way, it's very flattering. <laughs> <laughs> we got time for the very last question, Justin. Yeah. Shall I just press play? Yeah, here go we on. go. Let's get the German perspective. Uh, Jürgen, uh, also a big Tony Blackburn fan, half a century as a broadcaster. What is your question to Tony Blackburn? Uh, how do you think the society in England has changed uh, over the last 20 years? 20 years? Or 10 years, 5 years. 20, 10 or 5? <laughs> OK, we'll put that question to him. Thank you very much. OK. It's a great How's German the... perspective. How has the society changed in the last 5, 10 or 20 years? <laughs> um, well, I, oh God, that's, that's deep, isn't it? Why are all Germans called Jürgen? <laughs> um, <laughs> I think I think probably we're we're not as we're not as kind to one another and we we don't have the uh, as we used to be. I yeah, think I, the, I think that's it. And we, we you know we don't we don't respect one another quite as much. It's a Tony, shame. I think you are on. What do, do you think? You probably don't know what time you're on on this station. Do you? what time is it on? Nine o'clock on Saturday. Nine o'clock on Sunday. On Sundays. Yes. Tony, it's been yeah. you're such a nice. But it's oh, thank so, you very honestly, much. I, I've, I've, Justin and I do it again, boss. We've got to do this again. <laughs> Any time we have been fifteen year old fanboys. Literally, I can't believe he's going to come in. I can't believe we're going to have a proper chat with him. Tony, it's such a pleasure to work with you. Boss. Thank you. Honestly, you're a legend. Thanks for listening to this free download from BBC Three Counties Radio, your local radio station for beds, hearts and bucks, on FM, AM, digital radio and online at bbc.co.uk slash three counties. 